Welcome to online worship at Centenary United Methodist Church. We're glad you chose to be with us wherever you are. May you experience the presence of the risen Christ. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home to Sunday worship at Centenary United Methodist Church. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ to all of you and to any who are following us online and to those who are listening on 97.9 FM. And we hope we will be able to stay on the air for the entire time this week, unlike last week. Please silence your cell phone. Make sure you read all the bulletin announcements and take special care to look at the inserts. These are meant as invitations to people to come and participate in the life of our church. And they are beginning to function that way. I'm hearing some results. One in particular I want to lift up is King's Cadence. You want to say a word up here? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm sorry, I'm a loud type, as you know very well. I'm so excited that next Sunday we will have King's Cadence with us. Uh, if you remember me saying, one of the singers is a friend of mine, Casey Armstrong, was a singing sergeant in the Marines and sang at the White House and everything. Amazing bass voice. And this group travels uh, all over the U.S. singing, and they are coming here next Sunday. It's free. We'll take up an offering, and it says 11 o'clock. I just want to make sure that you understand it's not an 11 o'clock concert. You're going to have to hear some of us play and sing as well. They will sing a couple of songs at 11, and then at 4 o'clock they'll do a full concert. And this is for you to take and invite someone to come. And then on the back you see all the music ministry, um, the ensembles and everything. And this is a way to let you know that all of you are invited. There's always a place for you in the music ministry. You just have to be uh, a little crazy, act a little crazy, and love music, and you fit right in. But always, thank you so very much for your love and your prayers and support for the music ministry here in Saints Camp. Thank you, Paul. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent, so our Lenten luncheons continue. This week at noon in the chapel, there will be communion services throughout the rest of Lent. And following those services are Lent luncheons downstairs, and I hope you'll be able to come to those. We'll hear a little bit in just a minute about our Lenten offering. Uh, Karen Cooks put an announcement in this week, and I think it would be good to remind everyone of what that ministry is about. Karen Cooks provides freezer meals for anyone you know who might need a meal. We ask that when you get a meal, please sign the chart on the front of the freezer giving information about which item you're taking, who's getting it, and who you are that is getting it, which keeps us from having duplications, the same person getting multiple meals that they don't necessarily need or multiple uh, meals of the same kind, which they probably would not want. So uh, please make a note of that and take advantage of that wonderful opportunity to help your friends and neighbors when they are in need. Let's see. The only other um, announcement I had was that it is Scouting Sunday, if, if, in case you hadn't already figured that out. And as soon as we finish the, the announcements, the scouts are going to con, uh, continue leading us into our service. Let me ask Rob Patterson to come up. Dr. Patterson, you come up and talk to us about our Lenten offering this year. Good morning. And this year, as we were thinking about um, what we could do for our Lenten offering, we started thinking about um, that we wanted to support something in our local community. And as we started thinking about this, we started thinking about health care um, and what we could do to help people who really can't afford their medications or transportation to the hospital, um, that kind of thing. So as we thought about how we were going to vet that process um, and get this money into their hands in an appropriate way, we found out that the Carolina East Foundation um, already has a patient assistance program. So this program um, basically assists 
surgery or you've had a stroke and you need a blood thinner like Eliquis, it's over $600 a month. Um, if you just need basic insulin uh, for newly diagnosed diabetes, it's like $100 a month or more just for insulin. Um, and so they don't do this for a long-term period. They get you started on this and then um, social services can help you uh, go ahead and get set up for you know, continued care with your medications. They also do things like um, patients come to the ER with a problem and they can't get home. Uh, so they pay for cab rides for them home. There are patients that come um, every single day for radiation treatment or cancer treatment. Um, they really can't afford gas to and from you know, their home, maybe out in the county. Um, they can't afford that, so they help them with gas cards. Um, so they really do have a lot of good things that they do with this money. And they actually vet these patients along with their primary care provider so that you know you're giving your money to um, somebody who really needs it. Um, and so this is what we want to do for our Lenten offering this year. Um, there will be uh, a, um, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> um, there's going to be a missions fair uh, coming up next month, and there will actually be somebody um, from the foundation there that can answer your questions. So um, we hope that you'll support this mission. During this Lenten season, friends, may God's renewing grace fill you and guide you each and every day. Amen. Now, Scouts, you're up. Hello, I am Dylan Muse of True 13. Um, level 1, please rise for the presentation of the colors. Centenary, and I have been a 
Scout pastor for 23 years. Uh, <laughs> and it would not be possible without the support of y'all and sitting there United Methodist Church. Scouting is a youth ministry in the church that has given to many a young boy, helped to grow into a young man, and has been doing it for 95 years. So if you think about the amount of youth that have come through those doors down there in the basement, uh, that is a tremendous outreach, and we are grateful for that being allowed. Uh, 95 years of scouting in one place in one basement downstairs is <laughs> tremendous. It really is. Uh, we call the old basement, as y'all know it, our scout hall because four nights a week there's a scouting program in the old basement, be it either Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, there is a scouting program in our church four nights a week, and that's tremendous. And a lot of our youth are not church members, as per se, but they are church members in the scouting programs, and that, that is a lot. It means a lot. And I thank all of y'all for that. So give yourselves an applause. Before I conclude, I would like to uh, honor all our scouts that are with us. Would all Eagle Scouts in the room please stand? If you look around, you see our Eagle Scouts, and y'all can remain standing. Uh, would all scouts, youth and adult, if you were a member of Scout, would you please stand for us? And if you had a child in scouting, or you were a scout leader, or you were in any way touched by scouting, would you please stand? So, so you can look around this room and see how, how wide scouting reaches out. Uh, just about all of our congregation is standing, and it is tremendous. So I thank all of y'all for supporting scouting, and I thank you for what you have given to us. Thank you so much. <laughs> and with that being said, I would again like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've given 23 years here. Uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. Good Lord willing. Uh, and uh, I thank all the boys because that's why I'm here. Uh, one last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to recognize my adult leaders because without them, uh, I would not be able to do what I do. So would all my adult leaders please stand?
be seated. I invite the children to come down to the front now for the time with young disciples. Kids, come on down.
death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigure now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and the powers made subject to him. Would you please stand as you are able to read it from God? <coughs> this is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for us, the people. You may be seated. There is power in remembering who you are. Marty Johnson was the child of two college students who had a brief affair and gave him up for adoption. But as an adult, he wanted to know more about his birth parents. So he started digging through records and actually found his birth mother. Then one day he got a letter in the mail. Welcome to the Ogike dynasty. It turns out his biological father is an African king, for real. And he, Marty Johnson, a kid who grew up in Nebraska, is an African prince. He flew to Africa and the people in the village ran out to greet him shouting, Obiala, Obiala, which means he has come. Marty Johnson an adopted kid from Nebraska. Met aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers and sisters he didn't know he had, and then met his father, the king, who knelt before him and washed his feet in a traditional African ceremony of welcome. What a fantastic story. There is power in remembering who you are. Carlos was a homeless man in Chicago. He had brain damage, could not speak, and was a ward of the state. He had lived in a state-run facility since 1998. He used a wheelchair and wore a helmet to prevent injuries. Since he couldn't speak, his usual reaction to people was to smile and giggle. On November the 29th, 2011, something happened. 
One of the staff members went over to his wheelchair and whispered the name, Crispin Marino. The staff at the nursing home had discovered Carlos' real name. And that day, November the 29th, was his 53rd birthday. When he heard his real name, Carlos, Crispin, stopped smiling and giggling. Tears of joy began to flow down his cheeks because suddenly he knew who he was. And he knew that other people knew who he was too. There is power in remembering who you are. Today as we enter into the season of Lent, the season of mem remembering and renewal, I ask you, who are you? Maybe you define yourself by your looks and your health. I would be careful with that. Speaking from experience, <laughs> looks and health tend to dissipate and fade over the years. Maybe you define yourself by what you own. Fine clothing, fancy car, a nice house, a place at the beach or the mountains. And I don't really tell you to, I don't need to tell you to be careful with that because you've lived through a devastating hurricane. You know how quickly you can lose the things that you own. Or maybe you work long hours in the office, in the factory, in the fields, or you work long hours in the gym, or you work long hours studying and doing the best that you can, hoping to prove by what you accomplish that you're somebody. And I would be careful with that because there will always be somebody else better than you. Who are you? Maybe you think that who you are is what other people think of you. You have the disease to please. Maybe you think that who you are is defined by what other people have done to you. If so, you're living your life as a victim. Maybe you think you're nothing. You think you're worthless. You think you're useless. Maybe you believe you're so insignificant that if you died, people would quickly forget who you were as if you'd never lived. Do you really know who you are? What's your true name? We wear a lot of names in our lives and some of us are even proud of these labels. I'm a conservative. I'm a liberal. I'm an independent. We're proud of it. We think it's who we are. I'm a southerner, born and bred. I'm a mountain boy. I'm an American patriot, red, white, and blue. I'm a Methodist. I'm a United Methodist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a free thinker. Did you know you won't have any of those labels in the life to come? Our destiny is a perfected home, a timeless way of living where we transcend those names that we allow to identify us in this world. Who are you beneath those labels? Who are you in the core of your inner self? Who are you when you take off your armor and you put down your sword and shield? Who are you when you lay down your pretense and your piety? Who are you when you let go of your fear and your sorrow? Who are you when you're all by yourself and nobody's listening or looking? What name do you long to be called in those lonely silences in the middle of the night when you're the only one awake? Who were you before you lost yourself and who you've now become? Do you even remember? I know the answer to this question. God gave you a name at your conception, and God wants you to remember it and accept it. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is who we are. Who you are is not how you look or what you do or what others think of you or what's been done to you. You are not the labels you wear so you'll fit into some group and not feel so lonely and isolated. You're not the things that other people call you because they don't understand who you are in the depths of your being. And you're absolutely not a nobody. There is no such thing. 
like God's son Jesus, your brother, you are God's child. And your name, the name you long to hear, the name I long to hear, is Beloved. Your name is Beloved. God has given us a sign, a sacrament, baptism, to help us remember this truth. The gospel lesson today from Mark is about the baptism of Jesus. And if you've been coming to church here for the last two months, you probably remember, wait, haven't we already done that scripture this year? Yes, we have. Early in the year on baptism of the Lord Sunday. But it circles back around in our lectionary. And it's usually also the lectionary passage, the gospel for the first Sunday in Lent. In the readings for today, the baptism of Jesus is paired with that mysterious passage from 1 Peter 3. But you, as you were listening to it read, you, you may have been thinking to yourself, I certainly would have been. That's a weird passage of scripture. What does all that stuff mean about Noah and the ark and Jesus? The passage compares Noah and the flood to the death and resurrection of Jesus. And Peter even ties baptism into that. And we did not even read the Old Testament passage for today from Genesis. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that it's about God's covenant with Noah never to destroy the earth again by water. The rainbow passage. All those scriptures point toward a covenant relationship between God and God's people. One that was prefigured by Noah, one that was confirmed by Jesus, and one that we enter into through baptism. <clears throat> Let me explain it again. Noah and his family were delivered through the waters of the flood. The world drowned, but they were saved on a wooden ark. You and I are saved by what Jesus did on a wooden cross. He freely gave his life so that we might be reclaimed and renamed by God. And the link between these stories, these tales of deliverance, the link is water. And we acknowledge that connection every time we do a baptism here. The prayer that we say over the water, for example. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. Just like Peter says in 1 Peter 3. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, just as it says in Genesis 3. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. We didn't even mention that deliverance through water, did we? The people were delivered by passing between the waters. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Do you remember that story of Joshua and the Jordan River parting so the people could go into the promised land? Another deliverance through water. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. There it is all laid out, the connections between those passages, water. In so many ways, we receive life or new life through water. In so many ways, water is life. We simply cannot live without it. We certainly can't live very long without it, can we? Somebody reminded me after the nine o'clock service, 90% of our body is water. We're made of water. Water is a symbol that God has chosen to remind us of life. We're given life first from the water of our mother's womb. And then we're given new life through the Holy Spirit. And baptism is the outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace that God applies to our soul to reclaim us as his own. Through water, we are beloved children of God. That's who you are and that's who I am. And knowing our true identity and our real name can sustain us through any trial or tribulation. The reformer Martin Luther, when he would be overwhelmed by life, he would say to himself, remember Martin, you're baptized. It's no coincidence that these verses are used on the first Sunday in Lent. 
Lent is a time of reflection and renewal. It's a time to remember who made us and who calls us to follow him. Lent is a time to remember who you are. And I challenge you to take some time in the next six weeks to think about all the things that you may have let come between you and your true identity. Find a picture of yourself when you were a small child. Look at that picture and think about who you were then. What did you love? What excited you? What were your passions? What were your dreams and hopes? And then think about all the things that have happened to change you into a different person than that one. Reflect on those labels that you accept that cover up your real name. Own, to some extent anyway, that you may not now be the person that God made you to be. And then once you've done that, and you've looked at the distance between your true name and who you are, then remember your baptism and be thankful. And that doesn't remember to re that that doesn't mean you have to remember the actual event. Many of you were baptized as small children. If you don't remember your baptism, you can't. Remember your baptism and be thankful is remember that you have been baptized. You have been passed through water and claimed by Jesus Christ and be thankful. And friends, if all of this talk seems strange to you because you haven't been baptized, or maybe you haven't had your children baptized yet, don't put it off. There's no reason to wait. Come and see me and we'll talk about it. Your true name is Beloved. I dare you to go home today and look in the mirror and say, I am Beloved. I am beloved. You are a beloved son of God. You're a beloved daughter of God. You're a beloved child of God. Friends, life is not about how you look or how much you own. Life is not about what you do or what other people think of you or what's been done to you. Life is not about those groups you join or those labels you wear. Authentic life starts with remembering who made you, remembering who loves you more than you will ever know, and remembering who will be with you forever. Let us pray. Loving God, through your Holy Spirit, heal our memory this Lenten season. Help us to remember who we really are. And when we do, when we reclaim the name beloved then teach us to be generous like our brother and our lord jesus teach us like jesus to serve you as you deserve to give without counting the cost to fight the good fight despite our brokenness to love selflessly at all times and everywhere and to do the work you give us without seeking any reward except the assurance of knowing that we are pleasing you, you who love us so much. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn today is number 269, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. 269, and I invite you to stand if you're able.
while you are still standing, please turn to page 889 for our affirmation of faith. Affirmation from 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'll do the first part that says leader and then join you in the second part which says people. 889 at the bottom. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. You may be seated. We'll start our time of sharing today with joys and celebrations. What are the things that make your heart glad today, brothers and sisters? Yes. Well, I wanted to say that I went to visit Edith Bowman at the nursing home. Yes. And she had received so many cards for her 95th birthday from the congregation. She was so pleased, and she's very content here. Thank you. I don't know if you heard that, but remember we mentioned Ms. Edith Berman, whose birthday was coming up. And she's received so many cards from you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for your love and your generosity. Other celebrations today? Raise your hand high so I can see. I just want to celebrate once again our scouting program here at Centenary United Methodist. God has blessed us so richly over the years. Let's move to, yes, up in the balcony. I see you, Betty. Good to have family at home, isn't it? Yes. That's a good thing. Yes. Let's, yes. I'm just glad to be here. And we're glad you are here today. I'm glad you feel well enough to come out. And we're continuing to pray for your complete recovery. Let's move to our concerns now. We want to pray for Ben Bond, Ben who will have to have tests at Duke, more tests. We want to pray today for those uh, who have been diagnosed recently with serious illness. We've had some of those in the last few weeks, and we pray for those who are struggling and dealing with serious illness and receiving some very difficult and perhaps painful treatments. And we want to lift up those who suffer from chronic pain. Those folks frequently fall through the cracks. They may not be dying, but there are days when they feel like they are, so we want to lift them up as well. We want to pray for those who are facing surgery. We have a couple of brothers in Christ who have surgeries coming up. In the next two weeks, they have not given me permission to use their names, but lift up your brothers in Christ who are going to have surgery. We pray for those who are at home because they're not able to be here with us. We pray for those who are in rehab or nursing homes or facilities. And we pray for those grieving loss. We pray for Jimmy Stott and his family. His father, Randy, passed away. So we need a prayer for them. And we continue to pray for Juliet Meyer, whose husband, Rich, was laid to rest yesterday in Greenleaf. I want to lift up today another group of people that frequently falls through the cracks because the illness that they have is not necessarily one that you can all see or one that can be treated with a bandage. We pray for those who suffer from depression, anxiety, and other mental illness. And last but not least, we pray for a safe ski trip. They're out on the slopes right now. Today's the big day. A safe ski trip for our youth and chaperones and a safe return home. We're hoping they'll all make it back without having a cast or stitches look it can happen my brother when he was a teenager and went skiing somebody's ski pole went through his lip so shouldn't have said that to you but <laughs> i haven't had great experiences skiing myself i accidentally got on a black diamond slope one time and i'm a beginner and you still have to come down <laughs> it happens any others today? Lift your hand high. Yes, Charlie. Bill Watson. Thank you, Bill Watson. Any others? Don Calder. Don Calder. Don Calder. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Merciful and forgiving God, you anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit at his baptism and revealed him as your dear son. Thank you for making us your children by water and the Spirit. Keep us faithful to you throughout our lives. 
Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that through baptism you've clothed us with Jesus' holiness in exchange for our rebellion. Thank you for those who brought us up into faith. We pray that the good news of Christ could be proclaimed and heard by all people and that many would believe and join your family. We pray that we, the baptized people of God, would always hang on to your promises, especially when we experience the wilderness of sin from within and the temptations and trials of the world from without. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit so that Jesus' victory may be our victory. Have mercy on all those in need, particularly those that we named aloud and those that we have named in the silence of our hearts. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray to you as a family, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our ushers prepare to come and receive our offering today, I would like to offer this prayer. Let us pray. God of the wilderness, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide not only for our needs in this church, but for the needs of those in our community who rely on us. We give these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love throughout the world. And with these offerings, we also give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, please pass the peace of Christ to the people on your right and your left and in front of you and behind you. Closing hymn today is number 339, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, number 339. I dismiss you a reminder there will be a Stephen minister at the altar of the church to pray with anyone who needs prayer today. Beloved, you were never promised that you would not be tempted, not stumble or fall, but that by grace you will be saved through trusting God. Grace is a free gift of God, an ongoing gift for me and for you. You are a child of God with a glorious future an inheritance over which the angels in heaven marvel. Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism. May the quiet strength of Jesus, the humble power of God, and the pervasive light of the Holy Spirit be yours today and always. Thanks be to God. And the children of God said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today at Centenary United Methodist Church. If you'd like to know more about Centenary, go to www.centenarychurch.com. If you'd like to speak to me or another staff member, you can reach us at 252-637-4181. Or if you'd like to visit us, come to 309 New Street in beautiful Newburn, North Carolina. God bless you, and remember, God loves you.